Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Do you think that machines programming other machines is a good idea? Having artificial intelligence writing code, this kind of sounds like the plot to a Terminator movie, but we're there. Uh, we're starting with something that is both awesome and terrifying at the same time, and that is last week's announcement of GitHub Copilot. Now unfortunately this is a closed beta, uh, I don't have access to it, so we're just going to look at the publicly facing information, but this is really, really cool and really, really terrifying. This is one of the first things I... Th I've actually seen in my life when I went, okay, this could change programming. And maybe for the better, maybe for the worst. It's hard to say how, but what exactly are we looking at here? At first glance, you think, okay, well, this is just like IntelliSense++, but no, this is way more than that. Basically, this is machine learning to design to create you a virtual pairs programmer. What you do is you put in a comment, it figures out what you want from that comment, and then tries to figure out the best code possible. So you can see here, using artificial intelligence, uh, they've got the initial, so we'll start that over again. So he's doing get average runtime of successful runs in second, and then give it a name. And then it goes through all of the code that it has access to and tries to create Create the best version of that code. Uh, so you can see here it's working in Go, here it's working in JavaScript. Again, you give it a function name and then you let it do its thing and Copilot will suggest the body of your code. So what you're doing is basically via comment or function name giving it an intent. And then what it's doing is going through its massive database of code samples and so on. And then machine learning powered by OpenAI and it's spitting out actual code. And this isn't just verbatim copy and paste. In theory, they say a lot of this is um, AI generated code, uh, although we have some suggestions right away that some of this may actually also be uh, verbatim copied and pasted, as we will see in just a second. But you can see the way this works is pretty astonishing. Now, it's only available for uh, certain languages right now. Uh, it does especially well for Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, and Go. Uh, it understands dozens of languages, but those are the ones that are the most uh, supported right now. So one of the examples we're going to see that goes wrong, not in pun intended, is in the C programming language. So we're going to see maybe when this gets better, we won't see those kind of errors. But that, this is it. So you convert a comment, create a comment, convert it into code. Uh, it, it's a thing of auto fill terror, to be honest. But at the same time, here you can see, you know, it'll recognize that you're doing code that's really repetitious. And we've written that code hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Obviously, we've written this code so many times that it, it's figured out uh, what what to expect out of your code. So then it, it fills in the, the monotonous bits for you. So I can actually see how this will make a programmer's life better, but I can also see how you just take this one step further and just say, okay, well, I need a program to do this, make it for me. And we're not that far off. And if you're doing testing, it can also do some of the test work for you. Again, it's parsing the, the language of what you've done and it's using a number of different examples out there. You can also have it show you alternate versions of it. So you've got the first approach here. You can also go and pick which one you want. So uh, you've got the ability to, to go between different options. You can also go line by line and accept the code that it gives you or not. Right now, this is not meant to do unaudited code. You're supposed to still, you know, read what is there. So you can hear some, some common codes out there, fetching tweets in JavaScript, in Python, in Ruby. Again, all you're feeding it is the, is the function name and it is figuring out the rest. So there we just had TypeScript and finally we have Go. And here we see another couple of different examples, drawing a scatter plot in various different languages here. Um, memoization, Goodreads ratings, like it's just got so many code chunks to work from. It, it can just kind of figure out where you're going. So it's pulling it from the comment here. So it's like, oh, Goodreads, Git ratings, figures out the rest. This again is terrifying. And from what I've read of people that have actually used this hands-on, it's pretty impressive with what it will do. Uh, so that's kind of uh, where it goes in terms of how it works. Uh, it's fed a whole bunch of public code and text in from the internet into the open AI codex model, uh, GitHub services there, and then it's spit out over here. In terms of working, it is available as a Visual Studio Code extension. Um, so yeah, GitHub Code is an AI pair programmer that helps you write code faster with less work, uh, draws context from comments and codes, suggests individual lines and whole functions instantly. Uh, GitHub Copilot is powered by the OpenAI Codex, a new AI system developed by OpenAI. Uh, Copilot Technical Preview is available as a Visual Studio Code extension. 
Uh, then we get, how does it work? Does it write perfect code? No, it does not. How good is it? They've recently benchmarked it against a set of Python functions that have good test coverage in open source repos, blanked out the function bodies and asked GitHub Copilot to fill them in. The model got uh, this right 43% of the time on the first try, 57% when allowed 10 tries. So it's not a perfect programmer, but then again, most programmers are not perfect programmers. And the scary thing is with machine learning, uh, they get better all the time, which kind of loops back to, again, do we want computers to be programming computers. This seems like one of those things, you know, uh, if you're a fan of Warhammer 40K, for example, in the future, they learned that AI tried to kill them all. So every computer in the future has a human brain in it. Now, I'm not suggesting that we start vat growing human brains. I'm just saying this is the kind of thing that leads to a future edict where you're saying, okay, in the future, Computers will not program other computers because this is how you create Skynet. All right, so that is the detail there. In terms of where the data is coming from, uh, it is being trained by uh, mostly public repositories on uh, GitHub. Uh, so now you're starting to see a little bit more of the details of why Microsoft purchased GitHub and all of the sources that are available there. Although really there's nothing that would protect someone, protect someone else from doing this as well. Um, and also interestingly enough, does it recite code from training sets? The code synthesizer, not a search engine. The vast majority, the vast majority uh, of code suggests is uniquely generated and has never been seen before. So that means it is actually synthesizing new code, not just verbatim copying paste. But about 0.1% of the time, and we have one of those coming up, uh, it will suggest uh, snippets that are verbatim from the training set. So they're saying that this can happen. So what I'm gonna showcase in just a second, it's not, it's not a huge shock, but what came out of it is a little bit funny, uh, especially because if we go here to Responsible AI, uh, they say it's set up to um, take best practices in, a, you know, to, to not, a, you know, because one of the real fears here is if you could synthesize in a code sample that fed GitHub Copilot insensitive code, you could get that code injected into all of the code used by Copilot people. And here's the kind of the other funny thing. Does it produce offensive output? So you're not going to have offensive word. So includes filters to block offensive words and avoid synthesizing suggestions in a sensitive context. This is going to become irrelevant in a second too. But again, this is output. So just to clarify, there is a 0.1% of existing code copied verbatim and swearing is only on the output. So just one of those things to be aware of. Uh, telemetry, by the way, it, it does dial home, but they're saying it's completely confidential. It's just to send in the source uh, snippets and they will not share it. And then in terms of getting access to it, well, good luck. Uh, also, it is Visual Studio Code only. So also you may be wondering, what about commercial version? Well, if it's successful, they are intending to build a version that is commercial in the future. And this is what they're basically going to probably have as Rent-A-Coder. And I find that is, again, one step terrifying towards the replacing the programmer side of things. But at the same time, I don't like writing this code. I don't like writing boilerplate code. If this thing can replace the boilerplate code, hey, I'm down. So you basically, your programmer is just working at a higher level of abstraction. And I think it's almost inevitable we will move up that. We shouldn't be dealing with the minutia like we are now today, but I wonder how many jobs this will potentially take. Although there is an irony there because programmers and automation have taken away dozens and dozens and dozens of industries and millions upon millions of jobs. So, hey, maybe it's our turn. So uh, going on, I did say there was a bit of a gotcha. Uh, so Armin over here on Twitter kind of found this one. And this is actually some pretty famous code. And you'll notice some very interesting commenting in that code. Uh, this is a hack for inverse, fast inverse square roots from the Quake code base. And it is literally being copied verbatim. Because as you can see here, it's actually pulling up the license, which where this gets interesting is that is the GPL license which would make this code unusable in your project if it is not also GPL. So there are definitely some growing pains in licensing issues here. And as we saw, there is definitely a problem here. It's got to make sure that it's not training off of GPL or AGPL style code because you literally can't do that. So a very interesting project. By the way, there's another one out there. If you want to go a little bit less on the full AI front, there's something called Visual Studio IntelliCode. And this is more like... Uh, Intelli in IntelliSense that has been beefed up with training from the GitHub data set. It's also a Microsoft project, also plugs into Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, I believe. Is it just Visual Studio? Vis no, it's both. Um, for C Sharp, C++, Java, Python, SQL, TypeScript, JavaScript, and XAML. And basically it looks at best practices and gives you smarter IntelliSense recommendations. It's not the same thing as what we are looking at here with CodePilot. 
uh, but it's probably more useful today because basically it is a uh, machine learning based IntelliSense, much less. This one is literally trying to divine what you want in code and generating or synthesizing that code from your function names and comments. And I am really curious to hear your opinion in the comments down below. Is this a thing of terror or is this the future of programming or is this just a fad? Let me know, comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.